The other thing with consistency is I follow a mantra that says, follow the fun. I am always checking on, does this thing make me come alive? Doesn't mean that the second it makes me not come alive, I stop doing it. But if it starts to feel like a chore after that kind of resistance phase where it's like, I don't feel like doing it today. But if it starts to feel like a chore, like a job, then I stop. I've dropped podcasts for that. I got off Instagram because of that. And for me, the newsletter has always made me feel alive. I still look forward to writing it after 373 weeks. Being consistent sounds like straightforward advice, but anyone who's ever made a New Year's resolution and abandoned it two weeks later knows that sometimes it can be difficult to stick with things we know we should be doing even when we really want to. There are several reasons why making content consistently can feel about as easy as running a marathon in high heels which is actually a thing someone has done. It was painful. It was, it was really painful. I'm not going to lie. Maybe you've experienced these too. I'm not sure where to start. I don't have any ideas. I don't have time. I don't feel like it. I'm not seeing results. First, I want to assure you that these feelings are all normal. Every creator experiences this. And as a result, many creators have come up with strategies and techniques you can use to be more consistent without reinventing the wheel. At the beginning of this lesson, Kay He shared his biggest tip for consistency, which is to follow the fun and only focus on creating content that lights you up. If showing up consistently feels like a chore, it's worth considering whether or not you might need to shift your focus. M. Connors experienced this when she refocused her business around her true passion, Canva and creativity. I was going to make a course on meal prepping because that's what made sense. You know, I'm a nutrition coach. We have this gym. I know about meal prepping. It's what everyone struggles with. But the further into the course we got, I think I only got to like the outline of the course. And I was like, this bores me to tears. I don't want to talk about this. And I don't want people thinking of me as an expert in it. I don't want to talk about it anymore. So he was like, well, what would you make a course on if you could do anything? And I was like, how to use Canva? And he was like, then do it. And I was like, really? I mean, I have goosebumps even just still thinking about it. He was like, do it. Sometimes showing up consistently is difficult because we're overextended. Paring down your workload frees up more space to be consistent on the tasks you actually like doing. For Becky Mullenkamp, this means letting go of platforms and mediums that don't align with her business. It also means doing less overall and more of what she loves. I'm not perfect. I don't email exactly every week, every time. And sometimes I email more than once a week and sometimes I email once a month. But generally, you know, I'm not going long stretches of time without talking to my audience. I am consistently showing up for me specifically around email because social media is becoming less and less the place that I want to do my marketing. And really, I'm focusing more on email. And so I'm doing that consistently. Part of what's helped me is doing less. So letting go of a lot of social media because I'm a one person shop still, I can't be all the places. It's too much. And when I try to do that and stretch myself, then I can't show up consistently in all of them. So doing less, my podcast and my email are generally the places that I am staying consistent with. And then occasionally I throw things out in the other places. Well, guess what? Those are the ones that end up doing the best for me because I'm most consistent in them. So I think one of the things that's helped me is doing less. Also, releasing some of my expectations that things need to be perfect has been helpful. Once you've eliminated platforms and tasks that aren't right for you, you can save time by batching and scheduling content. Batching refers to making several posts, videos, articles, newsletters, or clips at one time, which you can then space out over several days or weeks. You can even use automatic scheduling tools like Buffer, Later, or Hootsuite for a more hands off approach. Here's how having a structure and a system saved M. Connors from overwhelm and decision fatigue. Our business mentor, right when we started, he's like, I'm going to challenge you guys to 30 days in a row of posting on Instagram. We had no physical location and we had no clients yet. We hadn't even opened our gym. And I had a four-month-old and an 18-month-old. I, I just remember I put them to bed one night and I was just like laying in bed at 9 p.m. And it was like day five of this 30-day challenge. And I just was crying. I had tears rolling down my face. Like, I don't even know what, what am I supposed to post about? I hate this. Like, so much pressure, so much anxiety. I'm a creative person. And he had told us about Canva. 
So the next day I like got on Canva and I just like made it my mission to come up with a system so that I wasn't scrambling every day to figure out what to post. I figured out, you know, what time am I going to post? I'm going to have a theme per day. I needed a structure. I had nothing. And to me, there's nothing worse than just sitting there and being like, what do I post about? But if you're like, today is an inspirational quote, or today is a reel about Canva, or if there's this like overarching theme, then it helps me like narrow down the process and the decision fatigue gets eliminated. M continued to use batching and scheduling to grow her business, even as a busy parent with two jobs. I used to have two jobs, two little kids, and this was my third job. And I still posted every day. I had to make it a priority. I worked on the weekends. My kids would take naps. I'd get my laptop out. I would batch my content for the week because my marketing mentoring job, I was on about five or six 45 minute Zoom calls per day with gym owners, helping them with their social media. I would have 15 minutes between calls to go to the bathroom, eat and like post something. And I somehow made it work because I loved it. I loved it that much. I was that excited about it. And I believed that I could help people. Got a batching system down. I decided I couldn't just leave it up to whim what I was going to post every day. I had to make a social media schedule. Okay, so Monday's going to be this, Tuesday's this, Wednesday's this, so on and so forth. Okay, now that I have a theme for the day, I can go and batch all my Mondays for the month and just make a bunch of that type of post in a row. So sticking with one type of post, doing four or five of them to last me four to five weeks of Mondays, then I'd move to Tuesday and do that. And I would just batch it. If you struggle to stay consistent because you don't have enough content to post, you might consider a strategy many creators use called repurposing. Content repurposing means you're using one piece of content across different mediums, like turning a podcast transcript into a blog post or sharing short clips from a YouTube video as posts on social media. Here's how Podia creator Veronica Green from Cultivating Confidence repurposes her weekly emails into content for other platforms. I'm all about repurposing content. I do email my list every single week. And then I take those emails and I turn them into social media posts. Sometimes I'll go through like a series of the same topic in my email list for weeks. So I'll take all of that content and I will turn it into a blog as well. It's like I'm reversing the process, not creating the blog and then sharing it to my list. I'm creating it in my list and then I'll make a blog about it. Take a look at some of your longer pieces of content. Can you pull out any tips or quotes that would be helpful on their own? Can you combine any emails or social media posts into a larger piece like a blog post or a YouTube video? The possibilities are endless. Automations are another way to streamline your business and be more consistent without having to be on your computer 24-7. Here's how Becky Mullenkamp ensures that new subscribers are consistently receiving value without having to manually reach out. I have a lot of things set up so that when someone comes in, I don't even have to be worried about an email to a new subscriber for almost two months. It's just on automation because I have a very long welcome sequence that introduces them to me, introduces them to some of my lower priced products, all of that. Most email service providers, including Podia, will allow you to automatically send welcome emails and sequences whenever a new subscriber joins your email list, which is a great way to provide value and nurture new members. Producing content and growing an audience is a monumental undertaking, which is why it's okay to ask for help along the way. The areas where you're not so good or you don't care as much about, you're not as proficient in, get people to help you. It could be an online learning platform like Podia that can help you with the back end and the technology. It could be a virtual assistant that would help you with scheduling or research or just make your life easier. But get help and delegate so that you can focus on doing what you do best. Don't try to do everything on your own. It's counterproductive. Many of the tips we've heard so far have been really practical. But what about those rough days where being consistent just feels impossible? Becky Mullenkamp and Tamkara Adun share how reconnecting with your why and spending some time reflecting on who you're trying to serve can give you fresh inspiration. I love what I do. And so when times are harder, I have to keep coming back to that. I love this and I want to make it work, but also I really need to make it work. And so that combination of things really keeps me in it because when I get to do my work, I love it. External validation is good. But internal validation is more important. When I started doing this work, a lot of people that I thought were going to see the vision didn't see it. 
but I just went on that inner conviction that this is something that I have to do. And irrespective of whether it succeeds or not, I'm going to do it anyway. So if you really have that internal feeling that you need to do something or explore something, do it. Just do it. Even if it fails, you will know for yourself that I did it anyway and I tried my best. But more often than not, our intuition knows what we may not know physically. So if your mind is telling you to do something, your spirit is nudging you towards something, the least you can do is explore that idea and go on that journey. There's no one size fits all solution for consistency. So you'll need to do some experimentation to see what works best for you and your business. Some creators will publish posts on Instagram or TikTok every day. Some will send weekly emails. Some will make bi-monthly YouTube videos. There's no magic number. So how do you know when something is working and when it's time to move on and try something new? Kay He recommends 25 weeks. Find the medium that makes you come mm. alive and do the same thing for 25 weeks in a row and see if it sticks. A few things will reveal themselves to you. One is you might just not enjoy doing the thing. Two might be there's another path of least resistance. And then there's an outside chance that even things you enjoy, it's hard to do them consistently for 25 straight weeks. What I've seen with most creators is that they're obsessed about the thing that they create. I still, not always, but most of the time, still look forward to writing an essay Every Saturday, I send my newsletter at nine Pacific and I start writing the essay at 6.30. In seven years, I can't get myself to not write it the morning of. Now, it doesn't necessarily have to be 25 weeks, but the idea is to commit enough time to experience what it's like to publish regularly. This way you can determine if you're really interested in it and if you still feel energized after the newness wears off. It's okay to experiment, so don't feel pressured to get everything perfect from day one. As M. Connors puts it, If you had a plan for consistency that failed, you have to have integrity with yourself. Look at what the process is and ask yourself, what's the hardest part? Why is this not working? What's holding me back? And really analyze it because you're the only one that can answer that question. And then again, have integrity and try to fix it. Like I'm not working out in the mornings. I really want to work out. For some reason, it's hard. My Garage gym is freezing. It was 32 degrees this morning. I got a garage heater and I have my husband turn it on. He wakes up before me. So it's toasty in there by the time I come down. So you got to like think about like, what's the hardest part? How can I work around it? Pick a cadence and a schedule that feels doable for you and commit to publishing consistently. At the end of the time period you set for yourself, reflect on what happened. Did your audience grow? Did you gain any new skills? Do you still love the work you're doing? If the answer is no, it could be time to iterate and change things up. If the answer is yes, stick with it. In this module, you've learned about the power of consistency over time and gotten some helpful tips from our creators about how to be more consistent. Up next, we'll look at how to solidify your audience for the long haul. Hey there, if you're watching this course on YouTube, I wanted to let you know that you can get the full experience of this course for free at podia.com slash get dash noticed. You get access to all the worksheets, guides, and additional resources, and you get to have conversations with other creators who are also taking this course. Again, just sign up at podia.com slash get dash noticed.